All right, we're ready for our special speaker. Lives in Lakeland. His wife Denise is with us. I asked Andre for a picture, and he sent me a picture with Denise. I met Denise in the hallway, and I said, Denise, did you know you're on Facebook today? She goes, no, I did not. And I said, well, Andre made that available. <laughs> so let's welcome Andre. Richard always asks for a uh, title, and it's always weird to me. Uh, I don't know. I just don't necessarily think about it. But in this case, I had this one already for a little bit. So it's called The Body and the Pressure Cooker. The Body and the Pressure Cooker. And uh, yeah, let's just pray. God, we thank you so much for your goodness. Father, we pray that you would give us eyes, new eyes, and new ears so that we can hear, not just with our head, but with our whole heart. And uh, yeah, let us be ready for what it is you have to say. In Jesus' name, amen. So, disclaimer, I'm still a mess. Uh, <laughs> who said yay? <laughs> it would be Liddy, right? Uh, man, I've been full of tears for the last couple weeks. Full of tears. Um, man, I've been going through some, some stuff some rough stuff you know when you think that uh i don't know i feel like sometimes we present the the, the beautiful and the put together and the uh i found the answer so let me be the one to show you and i haven't found that to be true for me but I'm okay with that because this journey that we're on to follow Christ is, that's what it is. The, the I'm going to have it all together one day. The, uh, here my, here's my book. I got four keys to help you walk in prosperity and total healing and, and never have to This is not from the Covenant Center. This is from me. It's a lie. It's not true. And that's not to say that we don't have hope. It's not what that is. Um, so let's get into it. Um, pressure cooker. A pressure cooker creates high cooking temperatures which cooks food far more quickly than at normal pressure. And a couple of more words kind of came to me. Distilled, and I have some synonyms for distilled. In the verb, it's to make pure, to draw out something. And then purify, to make pure, free from anything that debases, pollutes, adulterates, or contaminates. Uh, if you feel like you've been going through a pressure cooker, just give a wave. <laughs> I'm 
I'm hoping I'm not the only one. Not, I know misery loves company, but that's not what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, uh, so I've been going through some stuff. And the challenge for me is I've been a church boy for my whole life. Like, I can't remember a time where I wasn't in church. I can't remember a time where I wasn't at choir practice. I can't remember a time where I wasn't in the church. You know what I mean? My grandfather was a pastor. And so I've had to get used to to be comfortable with who I am, not as a person, but in the body. Because that has changed a lot. And it continues to evolve. All right. So I'm being vulnerable. Here we go. I've been going through some stuff, and I felt that there is no place for me. Broken but not ashamed. And sometimes we have to be real. Two things can be true. We have our present day struggles and we can also be seated in heavenly places with Jesus. There's a tension between the two and it does not eliminate our feelings in the midst of what we are going through. And so this is that tension that I'm wrestling with. And I feel like sometimes in the body we wrestle with it because it all, not the church universal, but sometimes the churches that we have come from or the environment hasn't always accepted weakness, hasn't always accepted brokenness. Even though the songs come up on the screen, we're still looking for a polished product. So that hasn't always created a safe place for us to be broken, to be honest about where we are in our walk. <clears throat> I feel like one of our greatest blind spots, us as the body, uh, is not being able to be, to, sorry, not, able, not being able to value and hold space for both in the body. The tension between where I really am when I'm broken and I'm crying because things aren't the way that I, I thought or had hoped they would go. The tension between that and I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. We have to be able to wrestle with that tension and we have to be okay with being where we are. And newsflash I don't know that we're going to necessarily get out of that. Some days may be better than others, but there will always be a tension between you being human and having feelings and emotions and life sucking at times and being favored by God, being loved by God, being a son and a daughter of the Most High. That is still true. And... Life is still life. Um, <laughs> honesty has been a huge word for me. And it's, it's, it's this word that has, and my wife has heard me say, honesty, 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 honesty. I just wish we could be honest about where we are. Because I'm going to tell you, when somebody is broken, and they come in and you're, you, you say this, meaning well, I'm blessed and highly favored. All you got to do, and you just start rattling off the Bible, the, the Bible quiz, the Bible bowl scriptures, you just start rattling them off because you have them up here. And for that person who is broken, that is painful because they feel like, well, what's wrong with me? Because I don't have, I don't feel that right now. Right now, I'm in a valley so deep that I can't see God. Susan, I uh, heard Susan say something uh, a couple days ago, and she says, uh -uh. we always hear the end result or the cliff notes of the testimony. The value is the journey. How did you get 
there? How did you get past the hurdle of pain that you had to go through? That's what I need to know. I don't need to know this is what it looks like on the other side because I'm not there. Mm -hmm. That is not valuable to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to that small groups. I'm just not. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, can you hold that right there? See what I just did right there? That's bad. That would be bad pulpit etiquette to do something like that. <laughs> and it makes me it makes me laugh so much because it's it's weird. It's fake. It's not real. It's not human. It's robotic. And we got to get out of that. If we're going to be any good to the body, but not only, we talked about, we, we sang about restoration this morning. We sang about, oh, God, we sing about revival. Revival is going to be messy. Restoration is going to be messy. I've done construction a little bit in my life. Uh, that's messy. You leave out of there not even looking like the same person. And sometimes it, take you, it takes you a couple of showers and a couple of, depending on what you were doing, Dan can tell you. Uh, you might have to use some of the special goop to get the stuff off. Yeah. I've heard WD-40. I've done, I've used gasoline. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've done it all. All right. So. This is me again. Here we go. <laughs> I've tried to avoid this message for some time because I wanted to have a joyful teaching. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> a teaching that uh, kind of is a, like a feel good or doesn't rock the boat, which would be doing the same thing as what has been done before. I then realized that encouraging the body to stand firm in what God has called us to called us to and to seek the example of Jesus no matter what comes our way is the message of encouragement we need in these times. I have a, I've been afraid. I've been angry. And then I'm here I am. I'm just now. This is just me. Right? Honesty. I'm here. I am where I am. I'm dealing with what I'm dealing with. And I'm a son of the most high God. And I have been chosen by the Lord. All right. I am the redeemed of Christ. So that tension that we go through is real. And we got to be okay with the tension. It's not going anywhere. All right. 1 Peter 5, 8 through 11. Stay sober-minded. Stay alert. Your enemy, the adversary, stalks about like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand against him. Stand firm in your trust, knowing that your brothers throughout the world are going through the same kinds of suffering. You will have to suffer only a little while after that. God, who is full of grace, <sighs> the one who called you to his eternal glory 
in union with the Messiah will himself restore, establish, strengthen you, and make you firm. <laughs> to him be power forever and ever. Amen. So Peter acknowledges, is acknowledging the present sufferings. He is not dismissing them, which could have caused them to become callous. But the weapon that Peter told them to use in verse 9, stand against him, firm in your trust. So the weapon that he, was, that he, he told them to use was their trust in the Lord. Their trust in who God is. Not absent of what you're going through. Not absent of what you are feeling. At the same time, that tension. The weapons of our warfare are Not carnal. Whew. So the challenge is in our present sufferings, in the things that we go through, in the day to day struggles that we have, many of us are parents, many of us have older parents or family. Many of us have gone through some pain. And again, I'm in the middle of this, so I'm not, you're not about to see, hey, here's the ways that you get over it. Because I don't have them. I'm in this with you. I'm in this with you. <laughs> the weapon is to trust in the Lord. When I was a, a boy, I remember a song that said, hold on to God's unchanging hand. And those church mothers used to sit there, and they would rock and cry and, like, hold. And I, I, I didn't understand. I was like, oh, this is a nice song, you know, as a little boy, because I hadn't gone through anything yet. But now on the other side of going through the things that I've gone through, I understand I understand why we sing the hymns now. I understand <laughs> why those things hold so much weight in our hearts. It is an anchor to holding on to God. It's a, it's a reminder of who God is in our, our current storms. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, and the challenge that I have, and it's, it's, it's a challenge, uh, not necessarily, it, it's a challenge to me, but I, it's a challenge that I put out to, to us as the body. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to phrase it in the form of a question. Haven't we come too far to not be real? Man... I've gone through too much to sit up here or in my daily life and act like things aren't what they are. I can't do it. I'm allergic to it. And when I hear somebody, oh, no disrespect. But when I hear it, it's like, uh, they haven't been through anything yet. Or that mask is really good. Either or. So, in my pain and confusion, or just when I have, when things just don't go my way, it's sometimes difficult and challenging to trust in God. I want to do what I think is going to work. I want to use what I feel like is going to be effective to get me out of this situation. 
but that's not the acknowledgement. That's not the, the, the encouragement that Peter gave. He said, even though I see that you're going through it, I see that your sufferings are real, because guess what? I'm going through it too. Trust in the Lord. And I'm sorry <laughs> that some might have been looking for something greater than that, but that's all I got. That's all I got is him, and he's more than enough. The temptation is to pick up the enemy's weapons. The temptation is to pick up what he is doing or what is going on in the world. The, the temptation is to, hey, they can do it, I'm going to do it because I feel wronged or I feel the temptation is to pick up the weapons of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And I'm challenging you and I'm encouraging you, don't do it. Don't do it. And that's like a death. That's like a constant death. When you feel like you're getting beaten up and you feel like you are being wronged or falsely accused and yet God is asking you, trust in me. When life feels like it's just pop, 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 pop. Trust in me. When you see things going wrong and you know they're wrong, don't pick up the, the enemy's weapons. Don't pick them up. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that Jesus overcame through death? And now it's asking us to overcome, overcome in the same way, through death. Yes, I know resurrection. Death to what? Die to the facade, the facade, to die to what our flesh wants to do. But until we are honest about where we are individually and as a collective and not throw spiritual language, Jesus glitter, Jesus juke, around it to cover it up we will repeat harmful behaviors harmful to the body and harmful to the world that we were called to evangelize the enemy wants to destroy the witness of the church can you see it i can see it Can I challenge you on something? Don't help him. I'm going to say it again. The enemy wants to destroy the witness of the church. Don't help him. 2 Corinthians uh, 2, 14 through 15. But thanks be to God who allows, I mean, who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread an aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are, to God, the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. Question for you. What's your aroma? What is the aroma of your life? Not just in the body, but in the world around you. What is your aroma? You, can't deter you can determine the aroma, but you can't say what it is. Guess who tells you? The people around you. What is your aroma? <laughs> if you were thinking to yourself, if you were to, to think of yourself as a scented candle in Bath and Body Works, and guys, that's the perfume store in the mall that gives everybody a headache when you walk in because there's too much going on. <laughs> the many, many smells going on in the store, um, excuse me, there are many, many smells going, in the uh, going on in the store. And if I am ever tricked into going into the store with my wife, <laughs> hi, baby. <laughs> There are some smells that quickly, I quickly walk away from. 
there are some smells that I quickly walk away from. There are also some smells that may never, I, n I may never buy, but I wouldn't mind hanging around them for a while. <laughs> Is anybody reading between the lines? As believers, we are called to evangelize. We are called to reach out to the broken. Again, we were talking about restoration. We were talking about revival. If you think that revival and restoration is going to be a bunch of people coming in and sitting down and, huh, I just love your worship. If you think that's how it is, it's not. You are sadly mistaken. It is messy. Broken people are actually really broken. I don't know if you knew that. Broken people are actually really messed up. But those are the people that we are called to reach and to love, not just tolerate, to love. So I finally, my wife and I finally watched the movie Jesus Revolution. Anybody in here watch that movie? Okay. And I'm a weirdo, so when I watch movies, they call them, in my family, they call them Andre moments now. Because if I have the ability to pause something and say, what do you think about that? That could be a 30-minute 30, 30 conversation. Right, sweetie? And so, <laughs> so I had several times where I paused that movie. Because I had heard many people talking about that movie and how it blessed them. And they had memories of that time. And some people got saved during that time. And I was like, wow. That's cool. But as I was watching that video, I mean that movie, and I paused it, it hit me. All the people who were struggling with their sexuality, their identity, fill in the blank, those are the new hippies. I'm going to say it again. All the people who are struggling with their identity, their sexuality, fill in the blank. Those are the new hippies. And that church, they actually did leave because the people were too messy. They were going to mess up their carpets. They're going to mess up the atmosphere. It wasn't going to look like they wanted it to look. Those people who are broken that we see in our world, that come on the news, that we may see in person at times, those are the new hippies. Don't throw them away. I can't. I can't. I remember my grandfather preaching many times. He would say, hey, such as you were, you were those people. We sit here nice, and God has done great things, but some of us got some stuff that we did that we won't add into our testimony. Probably shouldn't, but I'm just saying some things that happened in our lives that we were a part of that God has delivered us from. Delivered us from. That's just those people. Those are the sons and daughters to come. Those are the people who are going to find this Jesus. They, they, are, they are just waiting for us to love them enough and to deal with their confusion, to deal with their anger, to deal with their pain. Those are not people that we shun away because they don't look like we, what, what we want them to look like. We've been called to that. Don't forget that. Don't pick up the enemy's weapon. What is your aroma? The thrust, the great thrust, this is a quote from a guy, uh, Mike Erie. The great thrust of the New Testament is not about how horrible the world is, but it is about the faithfulness of the church. It's not about how horrible the world is because that's baked in to just life. It's baked in. They're always going to be among us. 
It's not going to change. That's why we are here. Don't forget the assignment. Right? Don't forget the assignment. It is not self-preservation. It is not for us to preserve whatever. It is for us to faithfully trust in the Lord, faithfully walk in the ways that he's asked us to walk, faithfully love those who are not like us. That is the assignment. Don't forget the assignment. God has called us, even in these times we find ourselves in, to be faithful, to stand firm in our trust in him. And I got all the, the same concerns and the same, I see the same things that you see, and we can fill in a whole bunch of blank and say, but Andre, don't you see that? Did you see what they did on the news? Did da, 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 whatever. Yeah, I did. I'm just keeping my eye on the assignment. I'm keeping my focus on the assignment. The church is a community, a body with nothing to lose and stands to gain everything. The church is a community, a body with nothing to lose and stands to gain everything. The church is a community, a body with nothing to lose and stands to gain everything. Once more, the church is a community, a body with nothing to lose and stands to gain everything. Amen. Dead people can't lose anything. I know there have been some people who got buried with all of their belongings. I guarantee you, they don't know they're there. <laughs> I don't know. It's just there, you know. We profess to have given up everything for the sake of him. Crucified, buried people can't lose anything. When the world is shaken because we are found in him, because of the spirit of love, we will not be shaken. The world is shaken. The world is shaking. Can you feel the world shaken? Can you feel that the world is shaken? We will not be shaken because of him. Not because we win this or we get this or we possess this, but because we're found in him. That is it. His love will sustain you. The enemy wants to destroy the witness of the church. Let's not let it happen. Amen.